Welcome back to first year undergraduate microeconomics. We've been looking at welfare economics. In previous presentations, we've looked at the gains from trade to the buyer. In the current set of presentations, we're looking at how to measure a seller's gains from trade. And last time we noted that we call those gains from trade to a seller, the seller's producer surplus. How do we measure producer surplus? Well, we were looking at Angie, and we were looking at Angie's marginal opportunity cost of apples. She starts with four apples, and we ask the question, what is the opportunity cost to Angie of giving up a first apple? That was 50 cents. Giving up a second apple? Well, given that she's already given up one apple, the opportunity cost to her of giving up a second apple is 80 cents. The opportunity cost to her of giving up a third apple is $1.10. And the opportunity cost to her of giving up her last or fourth apple, given she's already given up three apples, is $1.80. And we drew that as Angie's marginal opportunity cost curve for apples. We noted that we could measure Angie's total cost of giving up a quantity of apples by the area under the marginal opportunity cost curve. So for example, if Angie gives up three apples, then the total cost to her of giving up three apples is the opportunity cost of giving up the first apple, the opportunity cost of giving up the second apple when she's already given up one apple, and the opportunity cost of her giving up a third apple when she's given up two apples already. That's equal to 50 cents plus 80 cents plus $1.10, which is equal to $2.40. And that's the same as the area under Angie's marginal opportunity cost curve up to three apples. So that pink area there is equal to Angie's total opportunity cost of giving up three apples. We can use Angie's total cost to get her producer surplus or gains from trade. That's just given by the revenue less the total opportunity cost of the units of the product she gives up. How do we do that? Well, we looked at a simple example. Suppose that Angie sells two apples at a dollar per apple, then her revenue is just two times one dollar, which is this blue area here. The total opportunity cost is given by the area under her marginal opportunity cost curve up to two apples. So that's the purple area here. The producer surplus is simply the difference between the two areas. So that's given by the black shaded area shown here. And that's equal to exactly 70 cents. So Angie's producer surplus when she sells two apples at a dollar per apple is a black shaded area, which is 70 cents. And that's what we've summarized here on this slide. The only problem is that we don't know what Angie's marginal opportunity cost curve is. So let's ask a different question. Let's ask the supply curve question. How many apples would Angie like to sell at any price? In other words, what is her supply curve? Let's start off by drawing Angie's marginal cost curve again. And let's start by asking a simple question. Suppose that the price of apples is $2.10 per apple. How many apples would Angie like to sell at that price? Well, note that Angie would be very happy to sell a first apple. She's willing to accept 50 cents. So $2.10 is much more than 50 cents. She'd be willing to sell a second apple. The marginal opportunity cost to her of a second apple is 80 cents. She'd be willing to accept anything more than 80 cents, so she'll sell it for a $2.10. She'll be willing to sell a third apple. She'd be willing to sell that third apple for any price above. Oh, let's read that off the marginal opportunity cost curve of any price above $1.10. So she'll definitely be willing to sell it for $2.10. And is she willing to sell a fourth apple? Yes, the amount of money that she'd just be willing to accept is $1.80. So at a price of $2.10, Angie would be willing to sell all four of her apples. So we know that this point up here, where we have $2.10 and we have four apples is a point on Angie's supply curve for apples. 
What about if we choose a different price? Imagine the price of apples is $1.70 per apple. How many apples would Angie be willing to sell? Will she sell one? Yes, because $1.70 is above 50 cents. Would she be willing to sell a second apple? Yes, because $1.70 is above 80 cents. How about a third apple? Yes, again, because $1.70 is above $1.10. What about the fourth apple? No. Notice that Angie would only be willing to sell the fourth apple, her last apple, given she's going to sell three apples. She'd only be willing to sell that last apple if she receives at least $1.80. $1.70 isn't enough money to compensate Angie for giving up that last apple, so Angie will not sell that last apple. So at a price of $1.70, Angie will sell three apples, so we've got another point on Angie's supply curve for apples. And guess what? Choose any price between $1.10 and $1.80, and Angie will just be willing to supply three apples. So this entire vertical part of Angie's marginal opportunity cost curve is also Angie's supply curve. Oh, let's choose another price. Let's imagine the price of apples is 80 cents per apple. How many apples would Angie be willing to supply at a price of 80 cents per apple? Will she sell one? Yes, because her marginal opportunity cost is 50 cents, which is less than 80 cents. Will she sell two? Uh, perhaps. 80 cents is just enough to compensate Angie for selling that second apple. How do we capture that in terms of supply? Well, we capture that, just as we did for a demand curve, by this horizontal line here, representing Angie's indifference between selling and not selling that second apple at 80 cents. So this is another part of Angie's supply curve. And in fact, you can keep going. Pick any price you like and you will find that Angie's supply curve for apples traces out her marginal opportunity cost curve for apples all the way up. So our orange line here is Angie's marginal cost curve for apples. And it is also Angie's supply curve for apples. They're the same thing. So in summary, for any price, Angie's marginal cost curve tells us how many apples she would like to sell given the price. That answers the supply question, so Angie's marginal cost curve is her supply curve for apples. Or in other words, we can read Angie's marginal cost curve two ways. If we read it from quantity into dollars, that gives us Angie's marginal cost in dollars, for giving up a particular apple, or we can read it the other way, from dollars back to quantity. Given a price, the marginal cost curve tells us how many apples Angie would be willing to supply or that she would like to sell. So that's our supply curve. You can read the curve either way, quantity to dollars or dollars to quantity. And of course, that means we do know what Angie's marginal cost curve is, it's her supply curve. So if we need to work out Angie's gains from trade, her producer surplus, we can do that because we know what the price is, we know her supply curve, and we can work out her gains from trade. That's for next time.